नमस्कार आई वेलकम टू इंद्रशील यूनिवर्सिटी वर्चुअल क्लाउड टू अवर स्पीकर टूडे मिस्टर संजय वैद्य वी हैव जॉइंट विद वी आर जॉइंट विद डॉक्टर जे एस यादव हु इज प्रोवोस्ट एंड ग्लोबली फेम्ड केमिकल साइंटिस्ट अगेन आई वेलकम डॉक्टर भारती दवे शी इज डीन स्कूल ऑफ साइंस अमीश व्यास हु इज ऑन द वे बट स्टिल ही हैज जॉइंट एंड अभिनंद सर who is strategic project manager at Indusri University i also welcome dr sumit chaudhary who heads computer science department and all the andar live karu to andar even error aave che zoom would like to post connect to your timeline on your behalf what can uh, so friends uh, public only me ke custom okay first to mute kar dena beta sorry for this interruption and i continue uh, welcoming everyone and we are very happy that today uh, we have one industry uh, expert with us who is going to speak on industry 5 and cyber security which is very contemporary topic so uh, i invite uh, yadav sir and uh, for his thoughts today on this uh, occasion and before that uh, i would introduce our speaker who is which is actually very impressive uh, credentials he has and uh, he is actually having 22 years of experience in industry and he has done his post graduate from six universities uh, because i have uh, easy i mean easy to retain that is mit sloan iaft iim salford university columbia business school university of liverpool sir correct me if i miss someone something you know sir and mm -hmm. also uh, sir uh, is a cmi level 7 consultant which has a network of 143000 more uh, on this you know will be actually shared uh, by abhinand sir also he is certified nlp coach and cicm also he is a doctorate research too and uh, working as a regional director at nordis for uh, hcl technologies on cyber security as well um, sir is uh, has done his research on ot and iot as a part of his project at mit swan and he continued this uh, further in the university of liverpool so sir very impressive um, credentials you have it's very difficult to uh, compress in this uh, limited time and uh, i welcome you sir on our virtual cloud and over to yadav sir for his thoughts on this occasion thank you namrata Uh, Dr. Sanjay Vaid, I am very happy that you have accepted our invitation to be with us today for the next 45 minutes to one hour. I am sure a lot of people will get benefit out of that. And uh, in chemistry, we have seen up to industry four, level four. Now we are talking level five, so that is we are very much eager to hear that level five. We knew up to four only. so so we i just said that we are very eager to listen to the level 4 5 40 is and i don't have to say how important is this area of your and whole world is looking for that i don't know some day the every solution may come from ai the way things are going and i'm sure you either you take chemistry you take this and our chemical industry and all and things are going in a way that tomorrow our industry if they don't have ai section or ai supporting division we may not get even approval for drug approval and all those things because uh, you know now the knowledge the whole supply chain then raw material availability then the tracking the where are our consignment is there and all those thing auto tracking and all those thing i am talking because we are more in the drug company so in drug so it has become very important iot and combined with ai it's a fantastic uh, approach it is going to be so we are all eager to listen to you and again i like to thank that you have accepted our invitation and, and be with you, us today this afternoon thank you very much pleasure not leaving i'm going to listen all your lecture here okay just thanking you for accepting our invitation okay thank you yadav sir uh, 
And now it's time for Abhinan sir, who is an MITian uh, as well, and has been, uh, you know, a fellow classmate to Sanjay Vaid sir. So I request him to throw more light on Sanjay sir's credentials as well as set the background of the webinar. Yeah, thank you, Namrata. Thank you for a wonderful introduction of my dear friend, Sanjay Vaid. Sanjay is a dynamic professional in IT overall field. And that's why when I was thinking about Industry 5 for our students and also our fellow colleagues, uh, I thought that there is nobody else better than Sanjay to guide us to an important topic of Industry 5 and cybersecurity. He is also a certified NELP coach, you know, very difficult to be an NELP certified coach. And he has got such a high credential that I thought that, you know, there is nobody better than him to get somebody or a fellow classmates. And when I look at the background, you know, Sloan, I always remember Sanjay to be a live wire in the class. So I thought that I need somebody to be a live wire to give some inputs to our students. And you look at the topic, you know, industry revolution started, went to technological revolution, digital revolution, automation, and you know, industry four to industry five. And we look at industry five, the man machine holding is there, it goes to the mind. And then when it goes over there, I remember uh, my alma mater logo of MIT, you know, man machine to the mind, you know, heart, how it goes through it. And that's where I realized that, you know, somebody who is coming from that background is able to do it much better and is doing it practical. So when somebody is doing it practical, uh, he's guiding HCL to the next level. So that's better. And I'd like to share, you know, some nostalgia about uh, our thought process over there, you know, one photograph just for a while. And you can see over here, Sanjay is here, you know, and between side, I'm there. So I, I always remember the dynamic class and in between Bill Allard, you know, he's mentored to more than 700 startups every year at MIT. So Sanjay always remember the part of it. He has done a lot of good project with at MIT. And also besides Bill Olad, you will find John Van Man. So when I look at him, I also look at our Yadav sir over there with us. You know, John Van Man started his uh, career at MIT Sloan at, in the year 1972. And that's where I felt that, you know, somebody who started and still running very high with high spirit, just throwing one pick of the alma mater, you know. You can look at John Van Man. And I look at my colleague, Ripple. He was looking at him when he was standing at the desk. So you can have, you know, he has got a very high spirit. And he is a professor in OB and guiding big organizations like IBM and other many police academy and other parts in the USA. So such a great faculty over there. And that's where I was trying to connect with uh, Yadav sir and John Van Man. And that's where I realized, you know, we have got a lot of connect. And to this important topic, nobody else is so much clear and better to throw a light. So thank you, Sanjay, for accepting the invitation. And over to you, because I would like, you know, all of our students to get mesmerized by your talk and thought process. We are ready to engulf all the oceans of industry fire and cybersecurity from you. Thank you. Thank you. I'll share my screen. Sure. Yes, sir. The spotlight is yours. It was good that, uh, sir, you had reminisced everything, you know, at MIT and uh, you have shared with our students. Thank you. So, um, learning never ends. I am an example of that. Uh, I am doing uh, my research uh, in the similar area, but in two different uh, areas. Uh, one is from India. Uh, it's a PhD from the State University in Haryana. Uh, and one is from US. So I'm pursuing two PhDs. Um, I am a consultant, um, CMA level seven coach, cybersecurity practitioner. I have the fortune to work more with one of the biggest companies or most respected companies in India at CL Technologies. Uh, and had their Nordics business, which is uh, uh, Northern Europe, including Denmark, Sweden, Finland, and Norway. I'm based in uh, Copenhagen in Denmark. Um, and uh, as I said, uh, knowledge uh, is something which is 
constant. It, it is just, uh, you know, a subconscious uh, incompetency of not knowing what you don't know and to, to going to a journey of knowing what you don't know and then acquiring that and then it becoming your second self and you're acquiring something more. And that has been a quest I've been on and we are all on. The agenda for this uh, presentation is Industry 5.0. Um, and I will have split this into pieces. Uh, we will talk about Industry 5.0, the difference between 4.0 and 5.0. Then uh, big data, uh, Internet of Things, artificial intelligence, blockchain, uh, digital factories, smart governments, wireless body area network, which is a new concept, uh, and then cybersecurity in Industry 5.0, where we'll have uh, IoT, OT, uh, covered and the potential. Each of this is a syllabus in itself. I've been trying to take various uh, degrees, programs, and uh, courses. Uh, you know, in my last post graduation in security, I ended up doing ten different courses and spent hours and hours of additional learning to get them. So each of them, I I understand, is going to be a field. I am not expert in all of them. Trying to gather as much as information. But one of the things which I've done is since MIT project, I took my job posting and my job responsibility in this area so that I can be close to where action happens. And as part of my research at, during that time, I started working with the real companies, uh, finding real solution. In fact, one of our, we had five people in our, in our group which was working on this project. One of them was working for a large oil and gas company in um, the Middle East. Uh, ex Indian Navy officer. Uh, and he came up with a requirement of what he would like to see in Industry 5.0 uh, and what he what are the services he will need, which were not present at that moment. Uh, and then we set out to find a solution for that. Uh, in that process, uh, we went to GE, Cisco, uh, some of the biggest companies in the market worked. Uh, I got myself posted in, in UK to be close with British Petroleum uh, and some of the other companies to find out if they were using these uh, solutions. And eventually we did a tie up with the government of one of the countries, which is Israel, and found a solution they were using. And then since then I, I made sure that we were doing that uh, in the company I was in then, Wipro. Now in HCL, we have signed a lot of uh, NDAs and uh, agreements with companies which have some solutions in this area and I have executed for some of our customers that solution, which were a part of the research. And that research parallelly goes on. Uh, I picked up, uh, you know, big data as one of the things uh, to study further there uh, from scratch. Uh, and uh, security is of course where I come from, but as I said, each of them requires time and dedication to learn. I'll dwell further into what has evolved uh, apart from what we see uh, on the screen, one of the biggest uh, evolution, this was my master thesis uh, for University of Salford. Um, you know, the Morris principle that over time, the, the processes will get smaller and the cost will come down and the process speed will increase is one of the phenomenal, uh, and I use the phenomenal uh, uh, evolution as the basis of my research at that time. Uh, at the same time, the internet penetration has increased globally uh, across the world. Mobile penetration has increased. So not just from a theory perspective, but from an adoptability perspective, the technology is in the hand of the user in form of smartphones, connected devices, internet of things uh, to be able to consume. What has happened? Let's look at the journey. In 1780, uh, the mechanism uh, mechanization started where industry, industrial production based on machine powered by water and steam started. That was the first industrial revolution. The second industrial revolution was in 1870 with electrification where mass production using assembly line came in. Industrial revolution three was in 1970 where automation came in using electronics and computers. And in industrial revolution 3.4 Five was uh, in 1980 when globalization started and offshoring of production to low cost countries like uh, China started. Industry 4.0 uh, brought in uh, digitalization, 
connected devices, data analytics, artificial intelligence, uh, and automation processes. But there was a missing link. You know, in between there were threads of whether human and AI and automation digitalization are competing. And where does the infinite amount of creativity within human uh, comes in? So this was addressed in Adastri 5.0, uh, where personalization came in. This is where the focus on man and machine working together came in. The instead of robots, cobot came in, which, which observes uh, the human and then depicts that human uh, in form of the activities that are done. And in that process absorbs that, uh, that creativity as well. And at the same time, there is a cooperation between human and the uh, machine. And this will provide value in production tasks leading to mass customization and personalization for the customers. I'll just skip this one and go here. So what is the difference between industry 4.0 and 5.0? While industry 4.0 focus on connecting machines, 5.0 focus on delivering customer experience. And customer experience uh, is culture-based, it is uh, geographical based, demographic based. So it, it, it has a lot of uh, variables in it. Mass customization was what industrial revolution was looking at. Hyper customization is what industrial 5.0 will focus on. Uh, intelligent supply chain was what industry 4.0 was looking at. Uh, responsive and distributed supply chain is what industry 5.0 is looking at. And a perfect example for that is COVID, where instead of making mass uh, you know, luxury products, which might not be the need of the moment, you might have to be nimble footed and work with the government uh, and uh, citizens to provide them what is needed and do production uh, you know, on the need to basis. Then smart products were done during uh, the industry 4.0. Uh, now the focus is on experience activated or an interactive product. Uh, industry 4.0 had manpower distance from factories uh, and industry 5.0 is looking at manpower to return to factories. And uh, so that uh, both the machine and the robots or the cobots can work together eventually. So that's the highlight in terms of how they differ. What are the different elements uh, in industry 5.0? Big data and analytics is one of them. Cloud is another one uh, which is there because of uh, a high processing. Uh, we have seen in the industry a huge shift uh, you know, since COVID has happened, more and more people are working remotely and a lot of uh, companies on all of the companies have the traditional usage, which was data, moving to data, voice and video. A lot of calls like this we're having right now are happening uh, every day uh, for all of the companies. It requires, uh, you know, increasing the capacity, latencies to be taken into consideration uh, and other aspects. And then, uh, you know, we have uh, quantum, which is also going to get used. Uh, and this, this, this requires uh, deep investments uh, and uh, long-term commitments. Uh, hence, uh, for the foreseeable future, uh, all companies have plans either for platform as a service, infrastructure as a service, or software as a service, either on public cloud or private cloud. Adaptive manufacturing is another thing which, which is contributing uh, to this concept by, by bringing automation, robotics, uh, and human intelligence. Stimulation is another uh, thing. Augmented reality is, is, is big time. You know, I, one, one of the things I learned when learning at Columbia Business School was a concept called Li-Fi. Li-Fi is where you use light to send signals. Uh, and, uh, you know, a lot of big companies like Amazon are now using that concept of having holograms in stores created by Li-Fi to navigate the customer on what they need. Uh, and there are many more use cases that are coming, you know, uh, transaction-less entry. You go to an Amazon store in the US, you don't have to pay anybody. 
uh, or uh, touch any human being in the way. You just pick something and the, your wallet directly picks it up. Uh, and um, there are many more concepts when it comes to consumer electronics uh, uh, and banking com combining, uh, which, which, which we, we did as part of the research in Columbia Business School. Um, and then the uh, horizontal and vertical system integration, uh, which we are finding, uh, you know, the value chain is converting into value train. Uh, so the uh, the traditional value chain, which we had the forward integration and backward integration is completely getting disrupted uh, into a new model of value train there, uh, where the last mile provider might be an aggregator of everything. Uh, and a perfect example is Apple uh, for that. Uh, automation and robotics and drones coming in, uh, and then cybersecurity. Uh, you know, a lot of use cases are here uh, in Industry 5.0. Uh, smart manufacturing is one of them. Smart cities is another one. Healthcare is another one. But then there are security concerns in terms of uh, uh, all of this has some element of connectivity to the internet. So the, the connectivity itself can be disrupted data can be manipulated. We call something called CIA, confidentiality, integrity, and availability. All these things are, you know, are different for different industries and those can be compromised. So those are some of the elements and we'll touch some of those elements in, as part of this particular uh, webinar. Uh, before that, uh, let's look at uh, some of the other uh, enablers uh, for Industry 5.0. And um, this uh, this includes uh, things like uh, industrial blockchain, uh, which um, which allows uh, companies to have uh, uh, an integrated ledger of sorts uh, when it comes to uh, you know registering the activities uh, uh, and transactions, drones. Uh, uh, exoskeletons, uh, additive technologies, 5G is being a big role. We are seeing a major disruptor disruption uh, today, especially in Europe, uh, where I am right now, is uh, uh, the traditional uh, telecom companies have moved away from providing voice and data business and got into IoT services where health of cars are getting man uh, monitored to uh, electronic control unit in the car and putting SIM cards to re regularly send SMSs, uh, providing it, these services to manufacturing companies, healthcare companies, and then mixed reality. Internet of Things uh, has come a long way. Uh, in 1992, uh, there were around 1 million uh, Internet of Things uh, devices. Uh, and then uh, it has just exponentially uh, grown. Today, we have some 50 billion uh, Internet of Things uh, devices. Uh, and uh, these are uh, used at various uh, in various forms in various places. They are used in terms of sensors. Uh, they are used in terms of connected uh, devices, cyber physical layer, uh, and uh, communication uh, layer, as well as uh, devices which we, we used to traditionally use on a day-to-day -day basis, uh, like a tablet, which are now used for uh, managing and uh, you know, uh, automating uh, factories, smart meters, et cetera. Uh, and all this use, uh, and this, use, this particular uh, phenomena is uh, bringing a lot of uh, uh, automation or enabling a lot of automation uh, for companies. So with these various uh, different Internet of Things devices, uh, which are available, uh, I gave one example, use case of vehicles in electronic control unit, uh, where uh, through SMS uh, and GPS, uh, one can send uh, uh, the uh, you know data back to the control center in terms of health of the equipments, which can be utilized by car manufacturers, or it can be utilized by the uh, the OEMs like Continental uh, here in Europe, uh, or by insurance companies. And similarly, the monitoring uh, of pets, etc. Uh, 
uh, agricultural automation is another area right from uh, you know uh, the uh, the the production of uh, agriculture goods to packaging uh, and then uh, the downstream to the retail stores uh, are something which we are seeing uh, every day things are getting connected for smarter tomorrow uh, a lot of efforts are going in terms of consumer electronic products uh, to have um, connectivity to smart wallet and to retailers. Uh, one of the example is a refrigerator, which can automatically sense uh, any uh, you know, food or other things which are kept in it and send a request to the store, uh, which is connected to it. And uh, the bank uh, performs through blockchain transaction of you know, getting the money through the wallet and making sure that the supply is regularly provided. Uh, embedded mobiles, I, I talked about uh, tablets and mobiles are going to the next level where uh, manufacturing companies are building applications in them for controlling uh, the, uh, the shop floor and the machineries, smart home and smart cities. Uh, that is one of the biggest uh, use cases uh, that comes along with, uh, with, uh, with this particular thing. Uh, we are uh, scratching the surface right now in terms of uh, automation, but there will be a day where you don't have to go to give your vote to, uh, to a boat booth. You can do it from home, from a smart home uh, with the connectivity, which is possible. Everything that we, can, we, are, we, are, we have to move out for can be done. An integrated smart government, smart citizen, smart uh, uh, industry, uh, and smart healthcare can make sure that smart cities have home and infrastructure which are interconnected. Everyday things uh, can be provided as well uh, through uh, the Internet of Things. Uh, M2M and wireless sensors. Uh, we have the national grids uh, which can utilize them for uh, better uh, monitoring of uh, the grids. Uh, also countries and regions in India, for example, who use uh, uh, renewable energy like uh, solar or uh, wind can uh, get sensors to work for them to see uh, the climate and accordingly do the production. And similarly for other sources, steady medicines and healthcare can be provided as well. Energy consumption can, as I mentioned, can be done. Build managed uh, building management can also be done. So there are a lot of use cases uh, when it comes to Internet of Things. There are a lot of opportunities as well. Business are adopting. Um, uh, we have military. I have a case of one scenario where body uh, we can have. Uh, you know, or they're already been done where you can have sensors in the body uh, to track. I remember many years back, I was working on a project on DRDO uh, for, uh, you know, enhanced position detection system for soldiers who are in ambush in the borders. Uh, and uh, how do we know uh, whether the soldier has gone to the other side uh, or uh, what is health? Uh, and now through Internet of Things, the bodies themselves can be uh, a, a transmitter for the rest of the soldiers. Uh, at the same time, they themselves can be tracked. And I will be using a, a case uh, illustration of how it is done uh, later in this presentation. And let me just keep a track of the time as well. Right. So. And then there are medical uses, which, uh, which again, the same technology, the, the implanted uh, sensors in your body uh, can send to the servers for medical uh, health check. I remember Abhinand had this project at MIT uh, and he came up with the POC uh, as well, uh, or proof of concept with of this, this, this solution as well. Retailer, I gave, just gave an example of uh, consumer electronic product uh, companies working along side with the banks and retailers to provide automated delivery of services to smart home. Uh, uh, similarly, smart lighting, Li-Fi I mentioned, which will be used in the future to send, or France is already using it 
to send internet connections so rather than using Wi-Fi, which we use today. Li-Fi is getting already been put in some stations in France to, to pro, uh, transmit uh, wireless signal for internet. And there are future cases like uh, uh, augmented reality was one of those which I mentioned. Uh, smart meters, uh, you know, wear out sensing, manufacturing controls, climate, and I will talk more about this manufacturing control later. Uh, automotive, uh, you know, uh, smart parkings, uh, smart traffic lights, uh, giving intelligence information uh, for the best possible route. We are already are in it with Google Maps. It will get further enhanced and entity theft location. In fact, many years back for one of our Indian companies, I was working on a project in Russia uh, where we were looking at uh, using uh, these traffic lights uh, to provide medical facilities and other thing uh, in terms of tracking the city, uh, the smart city. Uh, so that, that's another use case. Some countries have uh, worked, started working some 10, 15 years back on this. Uh, environment is another thing where we can do species tracking, uh, weather prediction and resource management. Agriculture is another area, as we mentioned, we do crop management and soil analysis. So there are various uh, opportunities when it comes to Internet of Things. And this is one of the only things, there are many more things. Uh, variable uh, is going to get bigger. Smart home application, uh, and then smart health, industrial internet, uh, service industry and smart spaces and smart cities. So the circle will further keep enhancing. Big data, this is in, in the preparation of uh, this presentation, um, I came across new concepts. <laughs> I mean, I did my research, uh, you know, why velocity, volume and vericity were the three things which were traditionally known. Uh, but this volume, vericity and, uh, um, you know, this has further got uh, the new concept now. So volume was obviously the, the, the amount of data that was coming. Viscosity is, uh, does it stick with you? Does it call for an action? Value is, uh, can you find it when you most need it? Veracity is, uh, is it you know, helpful information? It is dark data. Uh, so it has to be contextual. Uh, virality is another concept, uh, you know, in terms of uh, are you able to use it in your presentation or it can be, uh, you know, have use cases. Velocity is uh, gaining momentum and uh, crisis uh, and opportunities evolve at the rate in time and how to keep an outlook on it today. Variety is, uh, you know, the different, uh, different kind of information that is coming to you in form of video, voice, data, et cetera, et cetera, structure and unstructured. Uh, and visualization, can you make a sense at a glance uh, and does it trigger decision? Why I put this is, uh, this constitutes to a lot of concepts like data hairball, uh, analytics, predictive, prescriptive, descriptive. Uh, and these, some of these are new concept as against the high velocity volume and vericity uh, in big data. Uh, this itself is, is, uh, is a big changer in organization. Uh, one of uh, my findings in my master research was that future roles will not be as we see because of big data, uh, especially uh, operation functions, marketing functions, uh, and uh, IT function might merge together to have a chief data officer uh, in organization who will take decision uh, into uh, how organization work. Traditionally, when I was studying uh, seasonality, uh, we used to look at uh, past historical data to predict uh, the production for future. This disrupts that thought process because this gives you data at real time to take a decision uh, in form of manufacturing or in terms of supply chain. Another concept is artificial intelligence, uh, which is another phenomena that adds industry 5.0. We had, uh, it started in 1950 with turning test. In 1955, it got evolved to the term artificial intelligence, 1966, we had ELISA, uh, first chatbots. In between 1970 and nine, 1908, uh, we had AI winter. And then in 1997, we have the deep blue chess computer. 
uh, who uh, who you know played against uh, Gary Kasparov in chess. In 2011, we got Siri, the intelligent speech assistant. 2011, Watson, and it's actually sitting right next to the headquarters here in Europe. Um, and 2014, uh, we had Alexa, which is virtual assistants uh, for Amazon. Tay, uh, which is a chat box, uh, uh, which was reissued for uh, other reasons. And then we have AlphaGo in 2017 by Google. Uh, and then in 2018, a new thing came in, which was the ethic guidelines on what is ethical and what is not. Uh, and then a lot of companies, you know, the Indian IT companies like HCL, Wipro, TCS have their own chatbots as well, and most companies do. Now, artificial intelligence has a lot of possibilities. Uh, we have the natural language processing, uh, uh, virtual person assistance, uh, virtualization, audio analytics, uh, graphic analytics, image analytics. Uh, in fact, this, this part has gone to the next level where you can create uh, 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 you know, a video of somebody uh, with, this, with, with voice and data, voice and uh, actions, uh, but completely uh, fake uh, from the person itself. Uh, and of course, Internet of Things, robotics and software, uh, robotics, machine learning, social networking analytics, machine trans translation, stimulation modeling, and deep learning. Uh, various uh, uh, use cases for artificial intelligence. Uh, and this is where Industry 5.0 uh, has uh, a lot of role to play. Uh, while uh, you know AI has its own learning, uh, making it contextual to cultures and uh, geography is what Industry 5.0 is further going to uh, make possible. The third element or in another important element in Industry 5.0 is blockchain. Uh, which uh, is uh, integrated leisure uh, and uh, enables bilateral uh, settlement by eliminating midpoint failures uh, and delay uh, or collateral cost and minimizes credit risk and exchange spread. Uh, there is no central authority. We typically need a central uh, certification authority uh, which will validate a transaction. In banking sector, we had SWIFT in Switzerland which might uh, uh, also be disrupted. And obviously, elimination of intermediaries, real-time settlement, a drastic reduction in uh, operational cost and high level of transparency. It has various use cases uh, in terms of tracking usage. So intellectual property like uh, content, which we make and which we read, uh, those can also be tracked to the point we read, not just uh, a book or uh, ebook which we buy, but to the, the consumption base. Uh, cryptocurrency is another uh, another example, and there are various use cases. Um, you know, you have smart contracts, for example, uh, with digital right, uh, Vegas, uh, escrow. Uh, we have a company here in Denmark called Musk, which is world largest transport and shipping company. They have end-to-end -end put a uh, blockchain. So we have something called uh, bill of lading when a shipment leaves a country uh, and a letter of credit, which is offered to bank right from bill of lading, which is, which is at the port of destination to the letter of credit, which is issued by the, the end, other parties bank is now got uh, blockchain. So there is no physical uh, or the traditional means of, uh, of these documents. It's all automated through blockchain. Then we have digital currency, we have e-commerce, global payment, uh, remittance, P2P lending and microfinancing. Uh, record keeping uh, voters, uh, for example, I just mentioned smart city part that uh, you, you need not eventually have to go to a vote, you know, uh, to a polling booth to give your vote. Uh, and this uh, uh, blockchain can make it further possible along with internet of things and uh, other things we discussed, intellectual property, uh, ownership, title record and healthcare can be kept. Uh, and then the securities, uh, uh, equity, private market debts, crowdfunding and derivatives. I think the Bank of England has already come up with their own cryptocurrency as well. Uh, so there is a lot happening in this space and it will further, you know, move further if this COVID thing uh, phenomena continues. 
digital factories uh, is is something which uh, we are dealing with at least uh, the IT industry right now big time. So smart humans, uh, human machine interfaces, uh, variable computing, personal devices, cloud and internet. So cloud community computing, the edge networking to Internet of Things, uh, the factory devices like programmable logical controller, distributed control system, uh, remote terminal units, which is the level zero and level one of the body model would get directly connected to the cloud machine to machine and remote access. And we are actually seeing this happening uh, in our day-to-day -day work right now. Artificial intelligence, uh, assistance system and machine learning uh, are getting adopted smart factories with industry 5.0 uh, with virtual reality augmentation uh, and uh, virtual commissioning uh, and this has taken up big time after covid because we especially the indian companies who who had resources uh, traveling to europe and us for work are doing all this work now remotely uh, and most of the this is further done from homes of people where they were even the people who are on site in in europe for example where i am they are doing all these work from home uh, for commissioning of various uh, automation. Robotics uh, in terms of mobile robot and auto vehicles are, are happening. Uh, and uh, the traditional players like Ericsson, Nokia, uh, and their value chain partners like Dish Telecom uh, and uh, Telenor, et cetera, they are now working towards this area uh, and automating uh, the manufacturing plants and their uh, downstream. So uh, what is my point of view and industry point of view? This is a combination of same. So one we're seeing live tracking of, uh, and uh, so labor are tracked, uh, machines, facility monitoring. Uh, I mentioned implants. Uh, it's not been used in civilian world yet, but it's already getting used for medical reasons and in military. Uh, exception alerts and notifications. Uh, big data and artificial intelligence. So I mentioned predictive, prescriptive, descriptive, uh, but then exceptional management, uh, role-based uh, dashboards. We are seeing data lake concept uh, and for the UEBA user and enterprise behavior analytics, uh, which is uh, getting infused. So HR department wants their own dashboard, uh, finance wants their dashboard, uh, the line floor wants their dashboard, uh, you know, South America wants their dashboard separately as against Europe, uh, Africa, or US or Asia. So all those uh, splicing and dicing of role-based dashboard is other happening with big data. And uh, uh, in global intelligence is further getting infused. Uh, everybody living on earth, most people living on earth have a, have a digital life on social media, and that makes uh, the life in the corporate world also susceptible to any uh, uh, so, you know, social engineering attack they might have. And we have various use cases to uh, illustrate that. Automation and machine learning, so decision algorithm, machine learning, uh, and continuous optimization is another area. Digital factory connected machines, uh, and I will illustrate this in my security part of this uh, presentation, integrated with supply chain to avoid bullwhip effect. In fact, uh, there is a lot of uh, disruption that has taken place. Companies are making completely different product in the last one year than they were making based on the government request. Uh, we, we have one case, unfortunate case of oxygen uh, today in India. Uh, digital warehousing uh, integrated with both factories and uh, distributors uh, to keep a track of the uh, the supply chain. RFID sensors to track the stock in inventory. And then uh, this digital supply chain where there is a real tra tra tracking of goods. Uh, as I mentioned, the companies like Ericsson, Nokia, and the t traditional telecom players, especially here in Europe and Disha Telecom, uh, or uh, Telia, they have got into this uh, business of uh, tracking uh, through SMS, GPS, and other communications. So same SIM card, instead of phone, it's getting used in tracking the supply chain. Real-time demand tracking for big data analytics. Uh, this is something from a consulting perspective, we're getting a lot of discussions and brainstorming with the customer, uh, you know, uh, where they want to know that they, they make uh, a production need to be basis. Workers are any which way not coming on the shop floor. So they have to be judicious on what they produce, for which market they produce, how much they produce. Uh, and that affects their PNL eventually. 
then um, we have uh, other concepts uh, which are like the smart government. And this is something which is future. Uh, we are all smart citizens now. We have smartphones, we have wallets, uh, digital wallets, uh, we have e-banking, e-commerce. Uh, so virtually we are having a whole life virtually and uh, corporates are also turning uh, virtual, governments are turning virtual, but all these three have to come together. Uh, so we should have smart villages, cities, smart jobs and growth so that uh, you know if uh, a child grows up, passes out of the college, uh, there should be a job for him and it should be planned uh, ahead of time uh, while he's uh, you know getting through school taking the subject of the choice and then getting into the job market uh, and that will help growth uh, smart trade and investment smart education and that i think is already happening i take a lot of courses uh, uh, through what is today the netflix of education uh, you know uh, you choose what you want to learn and uh, you take that course and start, uh, you know, uh, while you're having a lunch, your breakfast in the morning, uh, you pick that and there are hours and hours of video lectures uh, you can get into. Smart healthcare, uh, smart infrastructure, we all know these. Uh, and these enablers will be innovative infrastructure, uh, ICT capacity and skills, uh, policy and standard institution, and uh, shared ICT and infrastructure. This is uh, something which was a revolution, a uh, revolution for me as well. I knew till the fact that it is used to telemedicine for the preparation of this. I further uh, did my research. Uh, uh, wide body or wireless body area network. Uh, this is an illustration of one of the cases of Industry 5.0, where you implant a person's body with sensors. Now, there are various tests which are carried on on this uh, and the various uses. Uh, so one form is that you they use this um, in form of connecting to the uh, the base station and then getting it to, to the medical server and the doctor gets a regular report on the body. But the use cases now that the body itself, if the health of the subject is good, uh, can act as a transmitter for uh, as a base station for the other clusters. Uh, and this is illustrated in this uh, diagram there, where uh, the cluster A and cluster B. Uh, have two different, uh, you know, uh, members who are basically transmitter kind of thing. Uh, and uh, in case the cluster B is out of the range, uh, the cluster, the this this particular person in cluster, um, uh, the cluster head, as as they called it, uh, uh, in this uh, area, is is acting as a transmitter for rest of the people in this cluster. Uh, the use cases are, uh, of course, a tiny body healthcare sensor is implanted in the body to collect data and communicate uh, the human psychological data uh, and connects to medical server for monitoring of patient health. Military uses it or can use it for monitoring location of the soldier. Uh, especially, I gave you a, a case uh, if, if it is an ambush in the, in the borders, uh, physical conditions uh, of the soldier and vital sign of the uh, person on the field. And uh, this, uh, as I mentioned, clustering can happen uh, where uh, you can have a CH, uh, which is the cluster head being a transmitter given his uh, fitness uh, for the uh, other cluster members. So that's uh, one use cases and this will further expand uh, over the years uh, as, uh, as this area is further developed. And this is one illustration of a use case. Um, now coming to industry 4.0, uh, this again, uh, uh, in terms of security, this again is an evolved landscape. We had a first uh, attack uh, on Iranian nuclear plant uh, in uh, Stuxnet because it's a double-edged sword. Uh, uh, while you have all the benefits, uh, people can attack and a motivated uh, uh, attacker. And we, we in security world uh, have uh, these attackers uh, segregated and into three categories, uh, the space state sponsored attackers, the uh, syndicates and the recreational. Recreations are people who, who do it out of fun, but the syndicates are who offer it as a service and states are basically countries and governments of various countries who sponsor this. Starkness was the case of a state sponsored attack. 
since then there has been shemon and various version of shemon uh, on uh, uh, saudi arabia uh, then there was a german steel plant attack uh, which took place which uh, had a spear fishing attack and i'll give you an illustration on how this takes place uh, and they blasted the whole site uh, dragonfly and black energy in ukraine i'll also give an illustration how this took place and they completely crippled the country uh, some 225000 customers were without power for a while old which was a year close to where i am in finland where they shut down uh, the 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 heating and in this this part of the world especially in winter heating is very important the temperature goes up to around 50 degrees minus 50 minus 40 degrees in places uh and then trintron uh which was a hack on the uh, the uh, the middle eastern uh communication system of uh, oil and gas and just like last year we had uh, attack uh, in nox hydra in norway where i am right now so this is a phenomenon that is going on so while we are getting into this it 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 has to be protected uh, on a regular basis how does this happen this is something i did uh, one evening with a customer um uh, you know sitting in a restaurant on how this happens um so we have attacks that takes place at various areas you have the programmer logical controller uh, you, uh which are the machines actual so uh, which which can be infected uh you have the it systems which get connected the human machine interface the service stations the scada systems will monitor these so there are a lot of risk which have to be also taken care of when we are moving into industry 5.0 this is a typical case of uh, of uh, the example i gave you uh, there is a model by uh, by purdue university called purdue model which segregates ot into five four level level 1.0 level 2 level 3 and level 4 level 1 uh, is basically the walls the 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 figs uh, which are at the level below these are the automator uh, devices which connect to them uh in terms of the compressors the sensors and then we have the programmer logical controller from various companies like honeywell schneider ge etc which is typical for these equipment this was actually a research topic in mit how do these the varied plcs be connected to a single console to keep a view of what is happening in this state um, and there are various things you have to look at you have to look at the health uh you have to look at uh, the security you have to look at if there's something which you didn't want uh, wanted in this uh the solution and then you also look at uh, where the traffic is going on and the solution has been implemented for ongc and gas as well uh last to last year i actually took a job eventually to in a company which produced something like this uh, with the country which we did uh, the uh, nda for this research uh, to find out if this works uh and it does work and we are doing it now in my company and my previous company we did it as well but the challenges which come with the industry 5.0 is uh, a lot of automation uh and uh, which requires people to get remote access now when you get a remote access uh how do you ensure that the person who is getting access is not compromised himself there is no identity theft uh or, or uh, he comes in and he starts moving in the network uh, where he should not be uh convergence and it and ot how do you segregate the traffic between it and ot uh and then there are legacy systems there are systems which are old pre 2000 uh, which doesn't have support today uh, how do you and there are risk uh, for for the system uh, and then we need connectors because these are various plc then this all have to be monitored so that's that's the uh, challenge which we have um, in terms of standardization this is the scale at which and this is just one part of it of iot sensors that you're dealing with which has to be taken into connection and iot is just one area we have ot and other things these are the different frameworks uh, which are been published uh, which have to be adhered to by companies uh, depending on the area they are in for example if you are in energy you have to uh, for example and you're doing anything with north america so nerc north america energy uh, regulation has to be followed uh if you are in healthcare you have to follow hipaa and then if you are in ot there are various guidelines which have to be adhered to so there is compliance this is an example of what i told, talked about in ukraine uh the adversary came in through a target email uh and then once somebody uh, that email had an attachment which was malicious uh, the person it accept it clicked that email there was a reconnaissance uh, that which meant that the adversary went through the whole network uh and uh, understood the passwords etc of the admins 
uh, and then further expanded in the network and from there got into the OT network uh, where they further uh, deployed customized tool based on the recurrences they did, override wrote the firmware uh, and uh, this was executed in a few minutes uh, and then they simply took over the whole plant. So that's, that's what we are dealing with and have to protect is another thing which is uh, very different from IT. Uh, while in IT, we, we have something called CIA, I mentioned, confidentiality, integrity, and availability. There is a new element that comes in manufacturing, which is safety. We had, you know, one of the interesting thing where I started doing this research out of the various things which was offered was during that time, there was a, a plant of British Petroleum in South America, uh, which, which had a major accident. And, uh, there was oil spill and $73 billion of regulatory fines till they, the company has paid, a reputation loss. And I did my, in, in my master thesis, I, I started researching on this uh, and it was related to big data and IoT. And I found out that there are so many different things. One of the things is when you are working in remote sites, you don't have your employees. You have to take local employees from those sites, uh, which are contracted employees. They are training, their know-how was, was a risk. My professor in MIT was a consultant uh, in, uh, in, 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 in uh, oil and gas. He further uh, expanded this. The oil rigs, which we use, the health of the equipment is very important because when they go under the sea or under the earth, the gases in the earth uh, put a lot of pressure. If those healths are not taken care of, it can create a lot of uh, safety issues and catastrophe in terms of natural disaster death of uh, or uh, loss of life and financial losses. So safety becomes very important, followed by availability and then integrity and confidentiality. So it goes upside down when it comes to the uh, manufacturing and OT environment. This is a model by Purdue University of uh, Purdue model, which is now used by the industry, uh, which comprises of the process, which is including the field bus instruments, uh, the, the control LAN, uh, the human machine interfaces and SCADA systems uh, and uh, the process control. Now, in most companies we deal with, this is a different organization. While this is also OT, it's still in OT, we're still in factory, right? This is where the firewalls comes in, the network segregation comes in. Uh, and then this is where you have the enterprise layer where the demand is coming into you and you're doing this. Now, what is needed from a security perspective is you need to do network discovery. Um, I was party to doing it for uh, one of the government companies in India uh, some years back uh, for uh, their oil ether gas network in India. Uh, and uh, what are the findings, uh, which, which obviously we now use it, uh, but that was also a learning. Uh, we found that uh, some site which are middle of the sea had uh, uh, asymmetric connectivity. That means their input uh, access was lower than the output or the up, you know, it's one is to four. Uh, because of satellite. Um, there was some traffic which was going where it should not be going out, uh, out to. So you need to do network discovery to have visibility. In some customers in Europe, we have found that there are devices lying in the network which are not supposed to be there. there. And that's not, uh, you know, we call uh, uh, safe software, which, which, which was not theirs, or this was transmitting data where it should not be going. Uh, and then OT has 25 different kind of vulnerabilities, which is different from OT, IT. Asset discovery and management, you know, finding out the asset, whether they are patched, et cetera, is very important. Detection of unknown ICS attack, because if there is a, a state body, and especially in energy, oil and gas, which is mission critical or, uh, you know, uh, uh, critical infrastructure for uh, countries, uh, a lot of spying takes place. Uh, to bring down the infrastructure and, and a lot of, you know, I've also done uh, certification in cyber warfare. One of the things you do in cyber warfare is uh, you quietly just, uh, you know, spy. And uh, in, in terms of a war or a situation like that, use your enemy's infrastructure against them, right? Uh, so unknown ICS attacks are very important to identify because you, normally we have signatures which gets tracked, but something which has been designed only for you will not get detected because it is not there. So knowing that is important, detecting unknown vulnerability, known vulnerability. So obviously you look at, you want to know what is unknown, but you also have to know what is unknown. So machine learning and artificial intelligence plays a big role to do um, 
behave analytics so you would study the various uh, intelligence you have on various malware and start studying that in the infrastructure whether there is any behavior there is any encryption you are finding and those encryption are also used so that you can't detect it so you start looking at those uh, shas which which is the you know with sha1 sha2 or the hashes for example which are used and those if those hashes are something which which have been used in other cases uh, uh, and then you you start doing forensics uh and then detect operational man function and configuration a lot of times uh, you know for example this bp thing uh, if the the configuration was checked that the at this much of uh, pressure of this particular gas you should stop right uh, then uh, you know this catastrophe could have been avoided is one of the example so configuration is very important he is the boilers you know a lot of plants have boilers at what boiling point you should make sure that uh, the uh, the um, uh the uh, the activity is cut down or the heat is 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 managed to that degree otherwise there will be malfunction so those are various things in security or some of those things in in ot security uh and then we have this uh, this uh, heat map in terms of uh, what are the iot networks so iot is different from ot uh you have uh, data privacy uh, which is there which is information uh physical systems in terms of uh, identity protection um and then we have ddos attack which is critical uh you know uh, uh we we saw example of uh, implanted sensors we saw example of connected factories what if there was a attack on the connectivity itself uh and distributed denial of service was put in place or uh, man in middle attack uh, or session hijacking uh, took place uh and it has can have catastrophic attacks so those have to be protected and those are these are the various uh, you know we bring multi factor authentication uh, identity protection data integrity uh, masking hashing and various techniques uh, are used uh, as i mentioned uh, distributed denial of service because internet of things has internet in it uh, any compromise on the availability of internet can disrupt things and these are done by three three various uh, ways uh, one is volume based udp flood icmp flood protocol based uh, uh, where you have sync flood or ping or uh, death or application based which is distributed denial of service you choke the network and the the user has to get log off uh, and once they log off if you have a malware inside the network which uh, which is already residing it has nobody to come and do the incident prevention detection and remediation and then the adversary offloads the the workload there are also ethical issues uh, which 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 have to be dealt with uh, who get the access to the information let's say it's a patient's in healthcare information uh, privacy of information integrity of information what if somebody compromise changes the uh, the information and you get a wrong medicine or wrong prescription uh, people lives are attacked uh, the critical infrastructure uh and then you have the the boundary between what is private who what how if what if somebody publishes your information on the social media uh and then the 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 uh you know author identification the legal issues as well uh you know what if the service provider is out of the business uh and you have everything res residing there is this law ready uh, do we have laws uh to protect uh, against malicious intent uh, or people trying to make money out of this um uh, and uh, uh you know patching of iot devices is another area uh, are there standards been built uh, for this and they have to be regularly built because it's evolving area what if the internet goes down so there are various things which have to be considered uh in terms of uh, uh law as well and then um, you know we have to since it has a lot of uh, osi level uh, connectivity uh, we need to make sure that there is cryptography used for uh, uh, symmetric or asymmetric keys uh, uh, for and and i i understand a lot of users in india or people who are not from technology field will not be familiar with cryptography but uh, there has to be it's it's like uh, securities in terms of the financial market not everybody understand it but everybody does it it is the same thing which is going to go in iot as well uh, cryptography has to be understood to, to a lightweight standards uh, privacy has to be brought in data protection uh, has to be brought in by hashing uh, and masking of information uh, communication layer has to be protected by encryption ssl 
uh, encryption, which is done to see uh, once you do a tunneling uh, between a communication, the data flowing within tunnel, which is the uh, north south traffic, is uh, it doesn't have a malware. Authentication uh, is put in place uh, by uh, you know having uh, access uh, granted uh, with passwords and micro segmentation in terms of only outbound traffic. So once you reach to an IT gateway, you only make a request and you get have uh, you know accessibility on uh, need to basis. This is uh, a diagram on how a security operation center uh, looks like. We are, uh, you know, educating a lot of our customers. A lot of customers have changed their organization structure in order to adopt this. So OT is one area which I talked about where you have the manufacturing uh, or oil and gas, uh, uh, you know, uh, downstream, midstream, and upstream activities happening. You have the traditional information technology with cloud uh, being there. And in Internet of Things, uh, IoT, and applications which are now supporting both of them uh, are also there. And within this, big data comes in as well uh, so that uh, you can have user anomaly, threat intelligence, uh, which can be put in, uh, and then correlation uh, and aggregation takes place uh, with uh, an automation is brought in with a tool called security orchestration and automation response SOAR, uh, and which goes to security incident event management tool. And then we have uh, uh, dashboards which are available for us and our customers, which is uh, having a monitoring team sitting 24 by seven, uh, running analytics on top of it. There's an analytical team which continues doing analytics. Uh, once they do the analytics and identify that this is uh, a security event, they give it uh, to an incident handling team, uh, which uh, further takes up and uh, does the uh, incident response activity. Once they have done this activity, a forensic team comes in to see what was the actual purpose. Sometimes the purpose of an attack is uh, camouflage to take you away from uh, or get you engaged into uh, an activity and you focus on MTTR, mean time to respond to remediate, why they leave the payload as a fingerprint, which leads to them either spying or doing perpetual attacks. So that's uh, something which we do. And uh, I'll give it a pause here uh, before I do go to the concluding slides. Uh, Avinand, how are we with time right now? Yeah, you can uh, proceed. We can at least uh, close it because it's quite interesting. <laughs> okay. All right. That's nice to know. Thank you so much, sir. So Industry 5.0 is future. The potential economic impact of Internet of Things would be around $11.1 trillion. This is as, as per the report by McKinsey and company. Uh, Post-COVID governments uh, it will be smart governments or digital government, digital citizens, digital healthcare and digital corporates, and they would be integrated. Uh, human and machine would work together and we'll have cobots rather than robots and uh, securing the communication for data assets uh, say, and safety would be a paramount importance. Uh, so that's my last slide, uh, Abhinand and uh, sir, uh, and the distinguished uh, panel and the students. Thanks, I think uh, that was quite interesting, Sanjay. And some few questions are there and I'd like yeah. Namrata to take one or two questions and also, I would like to invite uh, our chief mentor officer, Biswajit Mitra, to give his take. He's been with uh, CEO of uh, Jubilant and a very noted track record of being in the pharma industry. Uh, uh, good afternoon to everybody. Can you can you see me? Yes, sir. See? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, first of all, thank you very much. Uh, uh, thank you very much, uh, uh, Dr. Sanjay. Sanjay, uh, I'm sorry, San, uh, Dr. Sanjay. Ved, thank you very much for wonderful session. And I feel that you know, after after a couple of years, I I could get connect with somebody, uh, uh, you know, and uh, I felt so good uh, uh, being now in Kerala where. Uh, of course, you know, pharmaceutical application, we can do a lot of things in industry four and five. Uh, and I just wanted to take you through a few of my journey 
and correlate how I am connected with industry four and industry five. Okay, and and very quick. I don't want to take much time because you know this is very important. And I want to also uh, get connected in future, Sanjay, because very important aspect what you have touched upon today. Uh, I I can tell you. I think when we started industry two, and those who are there are a lot of student. I can see that you know sixty seven members out of that, and maybe seventy eighty percent student they are here today. So I think I think most important thing for a for an university or for a college, we need to have proper infrastructure, you know, for, for instrumentation and control. I remember still in 70s or 80s, people never talked about instrumentation and control as a separate subject. It was more of electronic and telecommunication. So then, then we insisted and then finally university started considering um, our, our recommendation and then instrumentation and control system came in the university. And probably, I think, I think, uh, Mr. Sanjay, you also might have faced this problem because you know, 60s, 70s, there are no instrumentation, typically uh, laboratory in the university. So we had only examination paper. So I think, I think we need to focus in university. We need to focus that in university like IU, in university like IIT's Gohati. Uh, you know, recently uh, our professor Jadabu was there, Abhinand was there, I was there along with our chairman. And talking to uh, you know Setu Madhavan, I believe the director, and we are talking about what all we can do for the university, you know, or institute. So that was my first recommendation. We should have a smart lab in IIT so that people can inculcate, people can start uh, thinking all their uh, digitalization uh, area, and we can start from the university level and research level rather than going into the industry and start doing POC. So I think POC should start from university. POC should start from academic institution. So, so because I have been seeing for last 20 years that every, every consultant comes and try to do the POC in the industry. And that is where we are, we are not taking any chance, whether it is a manufacturing process, a supply chain process, or safety and environment. The POC cannot be done without proper exposure. That is what is one of my submission. Now, I just want to take, uh, take one step back and say that I have seen industry two, probably 70 or 80s. I started my career in 80s. So 50% of, of the manufacturing setup with our automobile, with our manufacturing setup, 50% is industry two. And, and probably industry three would be something like 25% is industry three. And five to ten percent industry four, depending on depending on our our uh, sector. If it is automobile or or aviation sector, probably industry four has come in the in the year. I think probably uh, uh, you know two thousand or two thousand ten. You know, sort of ten years back or fifteen years back in India. Industry three, when I started working, I, and there I I can tell you industry three and three point five. I started working for Reliance. And that time it was asked by, um, you know, IPCL in Baroda. So, so in 87, it was between industry 3.0 and 3.5, which was a, you know, distributed control system, PVC manufacturing, continuous operations and all. So I never knew that what is, what is the advancement. I thought that was the best ever plant I have worked. It was a full automatic plant. It was lifted from US. So after that, in 19, 2016, when Industry 4 started rolling out in India, I was in the National Committee of CII. I worked closely with Sunil. Sunil uh, was the convener for the Smart Manufacturing Committee. I was, uh, I was helping him. I was helping as a co-convener for Industry 4. So, so Industry 4, practically, I started working Industry 4 for batch and continuous operation from 2015-16 onwards. And now I think I think we understood very well that industry four is required uh, for pharmaceutical company like Cadilla for any any manufacturing uh, activity petrochemical industry as you rightly said automobile industry we need to have we need to have really strong supply chain activity where industry four can connect no, no nothing else can connect 
I can I can talk about safety. I can. It is most important thing which we never thought of safety. How much industry four can help not only equipment safety but also man individual safety. And and can you imagine? I was talking to my son day before yesterday, and he he is working with Micron Technology in US, and he said, Papa, I am working from home. I am operating the entire manufacturing plant from my home. And whenever I go to office, this is connected with IoT, so that if I go in between, uh, you know, two two of my employee within twelve feet distance, it is going to start alarming. Uh, you know, we start giving alarm, so that they are going to immediately identify two of our we are violating. So, so what you are talking about industry five is that you know somebody is working from home. And and working with the robot man machine interface to make the manufacturing activity like chips and all. What I can see that Industry Five already launched in many of the operation in US. But if you are talking about India, we are Industry Four again five percent, and rest of the things is in Industry Three or three point five. I what I feel that we need to work on preventive analytics, predictive analytics, utility analytics. IoT and and typically you know MTTR what you talked about we need to know what is happening in the machine whether it is it is a heavy engineering industry or our operational activity so I I feel that uh, there are huge opportunity and if I have to address industry I'll I'll say that industry four and five is the solution uh, in the in the in the forthcoming day though we have been talking for last five years. Uh, um, we are not in a position to do much headway because of some limitation. Of of course, you know, capex investment, everything is there. Industry five is going to launch, of course, soon. Uh, probably, I I would like to say that uh, probably next two years is going to be more focused in the industry five, where safety is the most important thing for for all of us. So, industry four, when we started working, we started working. Uh, on different level, five level, what you talked about. You know, we normally work with sensor, field instrument, controller, PLC. I think right from our university level, we need to know more of that. So, Professor Jado, uh, my appeal to you, of course, you know, I, I, I take my takeaway from this particular discussion is uh, wherever it is possible, we should do more. Uh, infrastructural development for level one, what we are talking about. You know, feedback control system, sensor, field instrument, PLC system, and that sort of uh, section. And of course, OTIT convergence, whatever you, you talked about, that can be the second level, what we can integrate. And the fourth level or third level, what safety, availability, and integrity part, remote access security, what we are talking about, Industry 5, which is most important. So I think. I think we are in a correct direction, but we need to have uh, some sort of you know infrastructural development. We need to have some good, knowledgeable people like you who can share your thoughts to push our all this uh, journey of excellence. So I thought maybe you know uh, uh, without taking much time, I just wanted to give some of uh, some of my views. Even uh, I have been invited uh, by Global uh, Siemens uh, uh, for their innovative day. Uh, uh, in India and in Singapore, also to be expert for digitalization for industry. So, uh, you know, I've been enjoying this particular field, and I completely agree with you, uh, Sanjay, with your view. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Mitra, and enriching this uh, this particular webinar by such a great insight. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, Mitra, sir. You reminded me of my engineering days. You know, I was managing TDC three thousand at Tata Chemicals, DCS control system. And Octo 22, which is also a very good DCS uh, PLC and SCADA system at Hathi Cement. Uh, that is wow. a 1997 days. So thank you for reminding <laughs> us. And also, now I would like to invite uh, two of my colleagues who are from the same industry. Srinivas is from DST Worldwide, and Rahul is from Srinder Industry to give some in insight to the kids over here. You know, my. Hello, students. They are excited. Hi, Srini. Hi there. Uh, thank you so much. You know, Abhinandan. You know, I would say thank you so much. And again, good session. Thank you, Sanjay. It's been it's been a while since we connected.
Yeah. Uh, Prasun Mitra again, uh, you know, nice to hear your, your, your views. Absolutely. No, I think rightly said, uh, Industry 5 is on, on us, right? Uh, you know, talking about automation, you're talking about driverless cars now. And uh, it's a connected, high, extremely highly connected world, right? Pretty much everything is connected. And, uh, you know, you're talking about Internet of Things. Uh, the the one thing that uh, you know is paramount in all this, right? As we move towards uh, automation in every aspect of our life, and uh, pretty much uh, you know uh, the automation becomes uh, part of our lives, right? Uh, when we talk about connected uh, devices, I think one thing that I think again, uh, you know, appreciate the effort of the university and Abhinand. I think it's a extremely topical uh, subject that you've chosen, right? Industry 5.0 and security. Uh, from that perspective and you know, looking at it uh, from that perspective. So one thing that uh, as we all have you know, seen over the last one year and uh, kind of counting is that the pandemic has affected us in you know, all the businesses in more ways than one, right? And uh, you know, probably we've not, uh, nobody could have been, uh, you know, could have prepared uh, themselves or no industry could have prepared themselves for what we have uh, for, what we have uh, seen over the last one year, and uh, you know, still, uh, you know, it's it's right. At least as of now, there's pretty much no end in sight. Um, so I, I think I'll probably quickly talk through some of the experiences that most industries uh, companies had, uh, mm -hmm. like for example, ourselves as well, right? So suddenly, uh, you know, many had to shift their organizations overnight, shift their industries overnight, shift their companies overnight and uh, pivot their resources into a crisis mode, right? Uh, as the internet became uh, the, the main and probably the only conduit, uh, you know, for user interactions, right? And probably the outside world as well. Uh, this, you know, and we also saw, saw a surge in online transactions, uh, kind of uh, led to a, a market increase in security and vulnerabilities, right? And the other thing that we probably have also experienced is, uh, at least we did, is, you know, kind of uh, bring your own device culture kind of came in, right? It was uh, at, at least uh, most of the companies, uh, it was still company provided laptops and desktops, but suddenly, suddenly because of the pandemic and everyone had to work from their homes, uh, especially if you're, if you're on the BPO side, uh, work from home was not there, you know, was not there, was not prevalent. Right, as as opposed to an IT uh, IT associate, IT resource who could always work from home, the PPO associate was always expected. That is, business process outsourcing outsourcing associate was also always expected to come to the office because of the sensitive uh, nature of the transactions that they are dealing with. Suddenly, you know, uh, you know, we were all thrust in the middle of uh, this pandemic, and you had to scurry around for devices and provide your associates with uh, uh, with uh, end user devices, right? So, uh, you know, in, to an extent we succeeded, but, uh, you know, again, uh, to a certain extent, again, I think we had to rely on uh, bring your own device culture, right? So that kind of uh, um, came in. So the work from home transaction, work from home trend in, kind of increased. Uh, the, uh, you know, overall this, this meant that uh, uh, cloud solutions were uh, being sought after in a, in a uh, much bigger way, uh, much broader perspective. You know, for example, pretty much everyone started, uh, uh, you know, looking at, uh, uh, you know, SaaS that is software as a service uh, from a cloud perspective, right? Uh, looking at different opportunities that you can leverage from the cloud perspective, right? So what it meant was, uh, you know, the cyber attacks kind of increased, right? Uh, so you had number of attacks, uh, which was, uh, you know, I think which probably Sanjay referred to uh, during this uh, presentation. From 2018 onwards, you know, we started seeing number of attacks like this: uh, Facebook, Twitter attacks, Marriott was attacked, right? Uh, and then recently, I think the month of July last year, our, our own PMO Twitter account was uh, compromised, right? So I think cybersecurity, uh, you know, uh, was was an issue. And what we can we can safely say that is the cybersecurity market is uh, is 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 continuing to grow, and it is expected to grow. Uh, at a you know, compounded annual growth rate that is CAGR of 14.7%, 15% over the next few years till 2025, right? The other thing that, uh, like I said, right? So co combination of all this and also the uh, internet of things wherein pretty much everything was connected and you had devices sitting at, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know uh, sitting at, uh, you know, 
people's homes, uh, industrial devices, and so on and so forth. Which meant, which means that you could you could only see that uh, you, you can only foresee that this you know cyber attacks kind of, kind of increasing in volume, right? So you, what if uh, a device is compromised, which is actually uh, running a plant or maybe which is sitting in, in a plant in, uh, in, in some, for example, a nuclear plant, right? Then uh, you know you can only uh, kind of uh, you know shudder at the consequences that you will have. So uh, you you can. Uh, uh, you can only expect that the cybersecurity market is going to, you know, kind of grow uh, in the uh, uh, in the way that it's anticipated, right? And then the other thing that uh, you probably, uh, you know, most of us don't uh, kind of overlook is the elections also, to a certain extent, present a, present a fertile, uh, you know, opportunity to hackers and uh, cybersecurity criminals, right? So, and, and also to a certain extent, uh, state-sponsored actors, right? So who will uh, take advantage of, uh, you know, democratic processes in, in different countries and try and see if they can uh, kind of uh, play around with the systems. So that's again uh, where uh, there, is, uh, there is a tremendous opportunity uh, on the security side to ensure that the uh, state-sponsored attacks uh, to an extent are minimized or, uh, you know, or at least uh, as much as possible, right? So, uh, so as you can, as you move forward, uh, uh, I think this uh, cybersecurity market uh, is likely to increase and grow, right? Uh, especially on the cloud, and as in, as as companies, more and more companies, uh, uh, you know, kind of pivot their resources and uh, you know move move their uh, uh, move their uh, loads to the cloud. Uh, we can only anticipate that the cloud, uh, you know, cloud market is going to grow. Uh, with that, the cybersecurity market is going to grow, right? So, uh, we, we, I mean, obviously, we are still. Uh, we thought, we all thought, you know, happily, at least in the month of January, February, we all thought uh, we are likely to see the end of the uh, end of the pandemic very soon. But of course, you know, one one probably was always aware that the second wave was there. Uh, but then, uh, right now, we are in the middle of it, right? So. Uh, you know, I, I think uh, we we can we can safely assume that uh, uh, you know in a, in a world like ours currently, wherein you know we, we are talking about Industry 5.0 and the pandemic that we live in, uh, cybersecurity becomes all the more important, and uh, uh, it is a great career option for a number of uh, students as well, right? So one should one should look at uh, cybersecurity as an as an interesting option, as a, as a great career op option and a possibility for a number of you, right? Uh, so I would uh, probably, uh, probably I'll conclude on that note that, is that that could be an explore, uh, you know, that could be explored by most of you as a career opportunity. So on that note, I'll, I'll not take much. Uh, I think Rahul is probably also there. Uh, again, thanks, Abhinand, and uh, good session, good topical uh, discussion that we had. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, Srini. Uh, now, Rahul, your wisdom words. <laughs> Thanks, Abhi. Uh, it's a surprise to, uh, to to be speaking here, actually, because uh, I thought I'll, I'll listen to my good friend uh, Sanjay and his Sanjay insights. Sanjay is super and fabulous anyway. <laughs> Yeah. So uh, uh, thanks uh, for uh, having me, uh, you know, share my insights. I think very valuable. Uh, I would say insights, not just information, but insights from Sanjay on on a very topical uh, theme, you know, which is there today. So I I am uh, you know currently part of Schneider Electric, and uh, you know very much uh, uh, the company is involved with what we are all talking in terms of Industry 4.0. But but it's. Uh, Okay, uh, while we all talk about 4.0 and, and in, in many cases starting to talk about 5.0, I think uh, depending on the maturity of the markets, uh, uh, even 4.0 has a long way to go and, and you know, long way to penetrate in, in some of the markets. The reality of the digital world is that everything is connected and, and I think uh, it's important to take advantage of that. Uh, um, of course, in practical terms, uh, it also means, uh, you know, a, a lot of uh, capital expenditure, etc. And, and that's where I feel some of the uh, organizations are, are trying to hold back, but I think it's, uh, uh, you know, a matter of time. 
I, I would uh, say, you know, um, I, I would give a parallel with the marketing world because, you know, we are often talking of industries. But uh, if you see the marketing world has been ahead uh, in, in all these aspects, you know, what is digital for, for marketing? It's about content, communities and connectivity. I, I, I call these three words, you know. What is content? Content is information or data. You know, data is the new oil as everybody talks about. Um, um, connectivity is about uh, you know interconnections it's about the smart devices the smart systems and all that that we are trying to you know achieve with industry 4.0 and community is really about getting together you know similar uh, i would say groups of uh, people of practices etc and try to take advantage of that so uh, i mean if you uh, work on that parallel you can really sort of relate to what industry is doing uh, with with what we're trying to uh, mm -hmm. you know get from uh, marketing and then the other aspect i would say uh, look at yourself you know today as we grow more digital as we're using more of these mm -hmm. devices what are we paranoid about we are paranoid about uh, personalization we are paranoid about privacy uh, you know, we are paranoid about empowerment. All of us want the power in our hands. Information should be in our hands. That's why we go to Google, right? Uh, we want that every service is customized to our needs. Uh, and uh, we, 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 you know, recently, you know, that whole uh, hype around wanting to move away from WhatsApp. I mean, that's all about privacy, right? Wanting to protect our identity and our data. So. I think uh, uh, these are the realities of today that we must uh, keep in mind. Uh, I would again say in terms of this pandemic, for example, has really, I would say, accelerated us towards 5.0. You know, if, if we see today the intensity of the pandemic and as well as the kind of response that we are seeing from different governments, different societies is varying, right? And, and therefore, there are a lot of disruptions in the industry. Uh, as, an, as a multinational company, I may be getting resources from certain geographies, which may be, uh, you know, uh, hampered. I may be producing certain products somewhere, uh, which may get hampered. I may have orders from certain um, customers in certain geographies, who don't want to take it now because they are hampered. So, you know, suddenly industries have to uh, reorganize their supply chain, uh, not just in terms of the manufacturing, but also in terms of, you know, supplying. Uh, and, and so I would think that era of mass customization is really around the corner. And uh, uh, again, I will take the parallel of marketing. That's something that, uh, the, that uh, side of, uh, uh, our work sphere is also starting, you know, we want more and more to look at uh, information, content, promotion, advertising, which is more customized to us than very generalist. So, so really uh, that uh, era of mass customization is coming in. And I think uh, those are some of the fields that you can really, you know, look at as uh, uh, students today, uh, you know, how you can be part of that journey and how you can take advantage of these themes that are uh, coming in across the world in some areas more slow, but in some areas faster. So that's all I would say. Thanks again, uh, Abhi, and, and thanks Sanjay for the wonderful session. Thanks, Namrata. I think uh, uh, Sanjay and Rahul and Srini uh, Mitraji, thank you for your wisdom word. Uh, Namrata ji, any questions? Because we are getting late. Yes, sir. Uh, Sumit sir is going to handle. Yes, Sumit sir is going to handle this one question. Yeah, I can yes. see. Sumit sir, over to you. Yeah, ma'am. Thank you. First of all, thank you, Sanjay sir, for giving this uh, wonderful session. And, uh, you know, thank you, all my panelists, uh, Shirini sir uh, and Rahul sir. In future, also, we'll like to connect with you so that our students will get many things from the industry perspective. And uh, one question I can see here, uh, uh, the question is how far reaching in business process management maturity to position the organization in better place to use IoT data? So this is the question uh, Sanjay sir asked by one of the participants. So can you, can you see the question? 
Um, just a second. Uh, I can start answering if this is the question. Yeah. I can see how far reaching is business process management maturity to position the organization in better place of user IoT. Yeah. So, it, you know, IoT is already there in organizations. Uh, the past, uh, you know, uh, year back or two years back, we were actually uh, trying to uh, make, uh, you know, people understand. Uh, because in, in companies, we have a different IT team. Uh, and a different plant team, and each plant has a different team. Uh, this is already there. Uh, the maturity is when you know multiple sites, uh, large companies have sites within the same country they, they originate from uh, and uh, globally as well. Uh, and depending on the industry, uh, if they are into oil and gas, they will have sites in the middle of the sea and on land as well. And the companies like pharmaceutical, uh, and uh, manufacturing uh, and retail uh, would have would would have its own ecosystem of uh, uh, factories. Uh, uh, then they will have their warehouses where they keep this stuff. Uh, and uh, in, if it is a ENU uh, oil and gas oil and gas, they will have midstream, downstream, and uh, uh, upstream. So it, there are huge amount of uh, benefits. In fact, I would say. Uh, you know, that uh, most companies are now turning to whatever they're doing into IT companies. Uh, whether you are a retailer, whether you are an oil and gas company, whether you are a pharmaceutical or manufacturing company, everybody invariably is now becoming an IT company. Let's take an example on Uber, right? Uber is providing car, car service or Airbnb, but you deal everything through IT, uh, through the devices. How do you do that? Through sensors, uh, to big data. So it is, in my point of view, POV, only companies who adopt this and are adopt this early and reskill the employees will survive. Uh, the economic term efficiency loss will be, will be huge for them to sustain uh, if they don't. So there is a lot of benefits uh, and uh, as we were discussing, there are companies at various stages uh, of adoption, uh, and uh, a lot has to do with skills of the uh, traditional. River. So there has to be a balance between uh, upscaling the existing employees and infusing uh, new skilled employees uh, and them working together. Uh, everybody, everybody is working on this. Uh, they have consultants. I, we ourselves are consulting a lot of companies. So this is a future, and our companies are going to benefit a lot out of it. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Hope now I request uh, Sumit, sir, uh, to just uh, briefly conclude uh, the session, yeah, and uh, I'll tender vote of thanks. Right, ma'am. Right. So uh, thank you. Uh, now I'm just going to conclude this uh, session. And, uh, you know, Sanjay, sir, you have uh, in, uh, included uh, all the aspects of, uh, you know, the latest technology that we have. And that is related to cybersecurity because in all the field, cybersecurity or security uh, is, is already there. So if we don't have security, then we obviously we cannot handle all the things that is there in all the fields. Uh, so you, you touched upon Industry 5.0. Uh, big data, IoT, AI, blockchain, digital, uh, forensics, then uh, smart government, wireless body area network, and these are the major area in in, in uh, recent field that we have. And uh, if I talk about industry 5.5.2, then uh, as far as I know and what I got from this session, it's refining interaction between humans and machines. And and in other ways, I can say like. Uh, you know, achieving optimal optimum performance to improve efficiency and productivity. So this is all about industry 5.2. So your session was very nice. And, uh, you know, you touched upon all the latest technology and our participants also got to know different aspects uh, of cybersecurity in different, different fields. So thank you, sir. Thank you very much for uh, giving this session and uh, sparing your uh, valuable time with us. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, so yeah. much, sir, for this concluding remarks. Uh, Yadav, sir, uh, if you would uh, like to have some... Yadav, sir, has gone for lunch, so it's fine. Okay, okay. Uh, sir, for me, you know, uh, having a literature background, I could see this entire uh, session as a very concentrated, highly concentrated thing. Uh, with a lot of, you know, uh, live cases also and uh, illustrations. 
and it was just like industry 5.0 was for me you know like a smart genie and uh, you know a cyber security to me was like you know aerial sills you know which we have learned in literature how they protect you know this uh, entire you know a smart genie so as to give you know the personalized things and the comparison between industry 4.0 and 5.0 was the one you know which was illustrated in a manner that even a layman can understand that so it was really amazing sir and in fact uh, i would like to thank abhinand sir uh, uh, for you know uh, bringing in uh, his you know fellow classmates his alumni you know all from mit uh, rahul sir and shrinivas sir everyone you know and vishwamitra sir is always there with us he's a chief mentoring officer at kerala so i thank each and everyone uh, including our dean uh, yadav sir bharti madam uh, sumit sir and abhinand sir once again because uh, this was very interesting though i am not having that background still i enjoyed and i couldn't you know uh, resist myself you know uh, listening to it continuously right from beginning to end so what eight uh, v's you know you have uh, uh, you know explained to us i feel in your presentation the entire eight v's were present velocity volume and uh, all that stuff were there sir so that is how you know sir uh, we thank i thank my technical team also uh, shashwat sir for supporting us for uh, Uh, live streaming this on uh, facebook also and supporting us technically uh, thank you all students and there are many more sir uh, abhinan sir told me that uh, madam is also there uh, shalini Mad madam is also there yes yes so <laughs> must thank her she is the one who is supporting him that's why ping chavi chiki otherwise he will be lean so that's why you have <laughs> so i thank all the guests who have joined uh, you know all the mitians you know alumnus of mit uh, thank you so much thank you students thank you my faculties also and i thank the management of indusian university for uh, giving us this opportunity to host this wonderful session amazing sir thank you so much sir namaskar stay home thank you sanjay thanks for the thank time you. thank you wonderful. thank you very much thank stay safe thank you